What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Character Profiles. This week we're doing the original series and we're doing Siegfried von Schroeder. So in the English version he's known as Siegfried von Schroeder. In the Japanese it's pretty much the same. His age, I would assume he's the same age as Seto Kaiba since they kind of grew up together sort of thing. So I'd put him at around 16 to 18 years old. His anime debut was in Yu-Gi-Oh! episode 185, Unwanted Guest Part 1. Here are his wins, here are his losses, and here's his dual score. Siegfried von Schroeder is a talented hacker and CEO of a German company called Schroeder Corp, which coincidentally is a rival company to Kyber's Kyber Corp. Siegfried serves as the main antagonist of the Kyber Corp Grand Championship arc of Yu-Gi-Oh, with this arc taking place after the events of Waking the Dragons, but before the dawn of the duel final season. Appearance-wise, Siegfried has greenish-blue coloured eyes, long waist-length bright pink hair with a fringe and long sideburns. It's worth taking a second to talk about his hair, as if you've watched the Yu-Gi-Oh series up till this point, you will have seen some very weird and elaborate hairstyles. These hairstyles have come in a multitude of colours as well. However, apparently, Siegfried's hair is the one hairstyle to have gone too far, as Seto Kaiba, Joey Wheeler, Weevil Underwood and Rex Raptor have all been caught heavily criticising it due to its unusual colour and shape. Get out of my life and take your bad hair with you! Just keep in mind that only one season ago we had someone with bright bluey green hair that was even longer than Siegfried's. Christ, they hang around with Yugi Moto for God's sake. The man has three different colour hairs in his hair. What judgmental people? <laughs> anyway, uh, getting back on track. Siegfried's attire consists of an expensive purple suit with the Schroeder Corp insignia embroidered on its lapel. Around his neck he wears a frilled jabo adorned with a purple brooch. He has been referred to as the untouchable emperor of Europe, due to him being the champion duelist over there. He is also marvelled as a trendsetter because of his fancy clothes. A signature item of Siegfried is his love of roses. He's almost always seen with one, even using them to taunt his enemies in a duel. Typically after he defeats an opponent, he will condescendingly throw a rose at them after the duel. These mannerisms reveal Siegfried's conceited and pretentious nature. In fact, at first meeting Siegfried, he comes across as an arrogant and vain person. However, he does have a kinder side, which is mainly focused towards his younger brother, Leon. He was actually genuinely upset, having had to lie to his brother in order to destroy Kaiba at the end of the arc. In fact, Siegfried's love for his brother is one of the things that reveals his many similarities to Seto Kaiba. They were both CEOs to companies that were previously owned by corrupt individuals who were also previously in the weapons and military game. However, after Seto Kaiba and Siegfried took over their own respective companies, they turned them into gaming companies instead. During both of their youths, they were both victims to educational abuse. They both have almost uncaring personalities at first glance, with the only exception being for their love of their younger brothers. And I guess they both wear expensive clothes? It's another similarity, I guess. Siegfried's name is derived from the name of Siegfried, a character in the opera The Ring of Nibelung. This opera was created by Richard Wagner. The opera tells the story of the Norse mythology saga. A notable moment was when the song Ride of the Valkyries played in the Japanese version when Siegfried played Ride of the Valkyries, a song which Wagner himself composed. <laughs> Just before we move on to his origins, here's a quick fun fact. Siegfried von Schroeder, along with Noah Kaiba, are the only big villains in the second series anime that have absolutely no awareness of Yami Yugi's existence. In fact, Siegfried went as far as to never actually dueling the main character of the series Yugi at all, making him the only major arc villain to never do so. 
Siegfried was born as the successor to his father's company, Schroeder Corp. He had a typical childhood robbed from him due to his father's systematic and abusive educational lessons in order to make him the perfect heir. This educational trauma caused him to develop an inner compulsion to achieve and be successful, to an almost obsessive degree. With his upbringing almost identically mirroring Kyber's, it was only fitting that he should happen to meet him at a business party when he was eight years old. Siegfried's father introduced him as a child prodigy, who had an unbelievable talent for computer programming. When Gozaboru Kaiba announced the new company deal belonged to the Kaiba Corporation, both Siegfried and his father were left utterly shocked, with Siegfried promising himself that he would personally defeat Kaiba Corporation someday. Years later, due to Siegfried's father's unstable mind after going mad after so many defeats against Kaiba Corp, Siegfried took over as the new CEO of Schroeder Corp, instantly abolishing the military department and instead pursuing the game industry. Unaware that Seto Kaiba had also become the CEO of his own company after overthrowing his father and as well abolishing their military department in order to pursue gaming adventures as well. You might be able to tell this was a filler arc. There are a lot of coincidences here. Despite all of the defeats Schroeder Corp had faced against Kaiba Corp, Siegfried eventually created a breakthrough invention known as the Holographic Virtual Duel System. Ready to make his mark, Siegfried made his way to industrial illusions to make a business deal with Pegasus. However, when he got there, he discovered he was too late. Seto Kaiba had already arrived before him and made his own deal with Pegasus instead. Infuriated, Siegfried vows to take down Kaiba Corp as revenge during the new tournament that Kaiba was hosting. Anyway, his plan was to cause havoc in the park and make Kaiba look inadequate and weak in comparison to him. After Siegfried had won all his matches and reached the semi-finals, Kaiba begins to remember Siegfried and then disqualifies him before the match, due to entering the tournament under a fake name. However, Siegfried says that Kaiba is only disqualifying him because he fears his true power. Since the whole world was watching, Kaiba makes a deal with him. They'll duel, and if Siegfried wins, he'll stay in the tournament, but if he loses, he will be disqualified. During the duel, Siegfried explains that his plan after he wins is that he will make sure Kaiba loses his company, and then Industrial Illusions will make a new deal with Siegfried instead. However, it doesn't really matter because in the end, Kaiba defeats Siegfried. Human humiliating him. However, this was not the end of Siegfried, as before the final match of the Grand Championship, Siegfried gives Golden Castle of Strongberg to his younger brother Leon, who had entered under a fake name too. When Leon finally plays Golden Stromberg, Siegfried reveals that his real plan was to receive all the attention so that Leon could go straight to the finals. The card Golden Stromberg as well was hacked into the system by himself, making the illegal card not only playable, but also giving it a bunch of super broken abilities. Want to know what the effects were? Well, here we go. Its effects were, during each of your standby phases, send half the cards in your deck to the graveyard if you cannot destroy this card. Once per turn, during your main phase one, special summon one random level four or lower monster from your deck in face of attack position. You cannot normal summon or set monsters. All monsters special summon by this card's effect, and all monsters your opponent controls must attack if able. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, destroy that monster in damage to your opponent equal to half of the attack of that monster. This card cannot be destroyed by the effects of other spell, trap, or monster effects, and your opponent must pay this card's maintenance cost. Woofed! I have a whole trivia episode on this card as well if you'd like to check it out. Check the description below. The card also contained a virus that would destroy all of Kyber Corp's files if it was not destroyed itself. And of course, despite the overwhelming odds, Yugi was able to triumph over this card. Siegfried then gave up and says he'll never be able to defeat Kaiba. He begins to feel sorry for what he did to Leon, but Leon still loves him and tells him that he can still be successful without defeating Kaiba. With Leon encouraging Siegfried, he thanks Leon and hugs him. And I don't think he gets any punishments at all after this. I think he just goes home and carries on working. In fact, Siegfried's story even ends with a little bit of a happy tale. In the last Japanese ending, Siegfried and Leon try to talk and make a deal with Pegasus. Pegasus looks unwilling at first, but after a speech by Leon, he accepts the deal, which makes both Siegfried and Leon very happy at last. Siegfried plays a Valkyrie deck, with the inspiration of these cards coming from Norse mythology. Siegfried's signature move is to summon all of the Valkyrie monsters at once using Ride of the Valkyries in order to perform an OTK. Siegfried otherwise combines his three goddess spell cards with Nibelung's Ring to gradually deplete his opponent's deck. 
banishing their monsters before they can play them. All of the cards included in this deck are Valkyrie Brunthild, Valkyrie Dritt, Valkyrie Erst, Valkyrie Zwight, Fortune Chariot, the spell cards Enchanted Sword Nothung, Final Light, Goddess Erdner's Guidance, Skuld's Oracle, Erd's Verdict, Verdance's Guidance, Golden Castle of Stromberg, Graceful Charity, Griffin's Feather Duster, Magical Arms, Mischief of the Time Goddess, Mystical Space Typhoon, Nibulg's Ring, Nibulg's Treasure, Nobleman of Crossout, Pegasus Wing, Polymerization, Pot of Greed, Rainbow Bridge, Bifrost, Ride of the Valkyries, Swan Maiden, Valkyries Embrace, and the Trap Cards, Apple of Enlightenment, Fricker's Meditation, Loge's Flame, and Wotan's Judgment. And with that, guys, that's another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Character Profiles done. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. What did you think of Siegfried von Schroeder as a character? Let me know in the comment section below. And also, what do you think of Golden Castle of Stromberg? Thank you very much for watching, guys, and catch you later.